Good hard Tuesday. Liked the intensity. Liked uh, started off a hair sluggish on offense and really picked it up and really got guy. I was very pleased. One of our better practices of the year. Saw a lot of improvement. I mean, but just in how we went about it. Defense, they said they had a really good day when we against each other. It was really competitive. Guys were juiced up. So hopefully we can hit a pra practice well. Questions? When you think about practice and what makes it complete, is there maybe like a checklist you go through in your head or is it just kind of a Consistency. Deal? I mean, listen, you ain't going to always make the right play. Have the right attitude, have the right body my body language. When it's there, okay, I got which I got it. Boom, my mind, okay, I, I, it, boom, I get it the next time. You know what I mean? I, or there's small mistakes, not major mistakes. And consistency, making play to play to play and putting plays together. You know what I mean? Very much like we did offensively the first three quarters of that game. That's for the last, you know, eight or ten plays. I mean, just had the ball, just kept scoring and scoring and scoring and moving the ball, taking care of things. You know, being smart like that. But consistency is what I keep looking for. Jimmy, when did you notice a spark of Trey Marshall for the first time last year? I'm sorry? Year? When did you notice a spark of Trey Marshall for the first time last year? I noticed it when I was recruiting him. <laughs> Let me tell you when I noticed it. I'm going to be honest with you. When he got hurt in high school. To go through what he went through and have the injury he had and to be in that hospital and then luckily to be alive, I hate to say that, but he was, and to get back on that football field before the season was over with an injury that catastrophic, I knew there was something special about that guy. He loved to play ball, and he did last year, and, he, and he's been that way since he's been here. Could be said after the Wake Forest game, uh, teams needed to evolve over the course of the season. Mm -hmm. What are you looking for specifically to see them evolve this week? The more consistency forward? and just understand just, to, to, again, offensively last week, I thought beside the first drive, we started fast. We scored, moved the ball, did things, and then learned to play it the whole way through. You know what I'm saying? And learn not to have the silly, the, the, you know, silly penalty that keeps the drive alive play with discipline not get, have a if they beat you they beat you physically I mean on a great catch or a you know that that's that happens mm -hmm. but not a mental mistake you know what I'm saying and not have a mental mistake here and let them out of a hole or something like that or I miss that you 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 miss a chuck on the vertical and let a guy get a free release things that just can't happen you know what I'm saying and understanding when you got people pinned back or when you're driving with the football and up two scores three scores those kinds of little things but that's where the young team you got to keep educating and teach I everybody thought I was upset I wasn't upset I was like and that, after that game, I was taking advantage. Like, I always say this, you know when the dog pees on the carpet? If you spank him an hour later, he don't have no clue what you spanked him about. You know what I'm saying? But just wanted to make a point to him mm -hmm. about what the opportunities we had right there to, you know, to address those things. And we did it after a win. We didn't play bad. It seems like fans maybe have been a little bit more critical of effort than you have. So I guess what are the the reasonable expectations you would have for him? Well, I mean, to, to manage the game and, and, and take, take, first take care of the football, which is doing a great job, win football games, lead his team. He's doing well. I mean, guys, it's like I say, people ask me to evaluate a guy on film. So I don't. I can, I can evaluate him physically. I said, why? I'm not coaching him. What he's being asked to do, how he's doing it, what's going on, he's making great progress in what we're doing. And we're winning football games. The email situation is. It's not about offense or defense, it's about the team. What kind of team do you have? How they play together. The amount of situation is. is Situation like do coaches always get more blame than they deserve? What, when what? Things, with Al Golden, do coaches always oh, get I, a little bit more blame than they deserve? No, Al's a great coach in my opinion. I think he's done a great job. He's a very respectable, great guy. I don't know what all he's. I, I don't. I don't listen to what people say about other coaches or anything else. I know the guy's a heck of a coach. I coach against. I coach against his teams. They're very well prepared and they play hard. Defensively, when you look at. Um, that happened last game with Wake. It seemed like they were very good about going underneath. Miami did some of that against Cincinnati as well. Is that, how much has that has been talked about in terms of making sure you can stop them underneath? Well, it is, but also with a different scheme. See, Wake Forest, them guys are doing it with runs called at the same time. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's actually there's a run where the quarterback can run and do that, and then you're having to play a different way than you would the other way. This this is a whole different scheme of how you do things. So, but yes, you got to match all those underneath routes. You got and you got to tackle well. You got to get them on the ground and do those kind of things. So, but it's, but it's a totally different concept. And how they do, I mean, and how they go about it. Not that they're not very effective. I mean, they're very effective. Jim Dalvin and Terrence, is it too early to tell them? Do you know that they're too to evaluate? How much yeah, I mean, uh, Terrence, I, I, I mean, you just have to wait. But Dalvin, uh, I guess day to day. I mean, we'll just, we'll just keep waiting, but no, it's all safe. With Nate being out, how's Derwin kind of taking the role? Knowing he's been really well. Start? Been really well. Uh, I, again, he did in the game. And he keeps evolving into things. And again, it's about that fourth, fifth, sixth game. You know, you start to really. He's kind of understanding all the different positions and been very pleased with his practice. Charlie said he's practiced well yesterday and practiced well today. What allows you to put him like as a, as a rusher? Well, because, because you can spy. Well, well, it is because well you can blitz him, but you can spy him on a quarterback. You can cover a back with him. You can cover a tight end, or you can blitz him as a big safety. I mean, he's 212, 14 pounds. So I mean, all those different looks, and you don't know what he's going to do. You know, what I mean, he's a, he's a perfect nickel dime guy in there to do those kind of things, and he has great speed and size. So I mean, and he has that. 
He has a knack. He's just a football player to find that hole. And you know, Joyner was a great blitzer. The other guy was a great blitzer, which we didn't play in there as much as it really should have. One of the best blitzers, believe it or not. You know who it was? Greg Reed. <laughs> At five foot eight, or and he'll say in time I said five foot eight. <laughs> and, and but you know, 180, whatever he was, he had a knack for doing that. You know, certain guys just have a knack for slithering through there or getting under a tackle or whatever it may be. Is Dalvin the kind of guy that can not practice this week and still play on Saturday? Oh, yeah, no doubt. I mean, that because of injuries. But he knows what to do and keep him healthy and, and do that. There's no doubt about that. What do you think it'll do for Jonathan just having those carries off films? Well, I think giving the confidence that I went into a game that wasn't a, a, a mop-up role that was on the game, you know, early in the game, very critical, and I, I was a key part in what happened. Scored touchdowns, picked up blitzes, made short yardage runs, you know what I mean, caught a couple screens. I mean, you know, that, just going out there and finally doing it when it really, as I say, really matters, that's huge. I, I think for your inner confidence, you know what I'm saying? That can be huge. Is there a difference in Featherston with another week? Is he more, or was he 100% line? Yeah, he was. And, and the way the game went and right, what happened, he got so stiff and cold on the yeah. side and the side. And then, so we just elected not to do it. But uh, yes, I mean, he's practicing well. He should be, he should be, in, he practiced all day today. He was taking reps with everybody. Past couple of games, sounds like a while up tonight, kickoffs. Good. Good. He hit one a little high, but we're trying to get the hang time. He hit one about four yards, and it was into that wind. Got just the extra high, and the next time he kicked it out. He's been good. He's been hitting them really good.